Chapter One, Captain Walton. In 1780, an English ship was sailing across the Arctic Sea. Captain Walton and his crew were travelling towards the North Pole. They were on a voyage of scientific exploration. The Arctic ice was all around them. Many of the crew were afraid. Suddenly, a sailor shouted, Look! Something is moving on the ice! What is it? My God! It's a sledge with dogs! And there's a man on it! He's no ordinary man! He looks like a giant! He's moving very fast! Look! He's going behind that mountain of ice! Who is he? Where is he going in the middle of the Arctic? That night, there was a great storm. The next morning... We must be very careful. The storm has broken up the ice into pieces. One of the sailors saw something in the sea. Captain! Look at that block of ice! There's a man on it! They pulled the man onto the ship. He's nearly dead from the cold. Is he the man we saw yesterday, Captain? No, I don't think so. You are safe now. My name is Walton. I am the captain. Who are you? My name is Victor Frankenstein. What are you doing here, alone in the middle of the Arctic? I am following someone. We saw someone yesterday, travelling fast on a sledge. It was him. I must find him before he kills again. He's a monster. The man was exhausted. Take him down to my cabin. He can sleep there. Chapter 2 Victor's Childhood The next day, Frankenstein was still very weak. Who are you? And who is this monster that you speak of? My life is a strange and terrible story, Captain Walton. I hope you will believe me. I was born in Geneva, in Switzerland. My family was rich, and we had a beautiful house next to the lake. Frankenstein described his happy childhood. His parents loved their children, Victor, and his young brother, William. One day, his parents returned after a journey to Italy. A beautiful young girl was with them. Victor, this is Elizabeth. She is an orphan and has no family. She is going to live with us. Victor soon fell in love with the girl. Elizabeth, you are more than a sister and more than a friend to me. Oh, Victor, I am so happy here with you. Victor and his friend Henry Clerval liked studying. They were particularly interested in science. One summer, the family were on holiday in the mountains. Look at those clouds. There's a storm coming. A few minutes later, the rain started. It's raining. Come inside, Victor. It's dangerous out there. No! I want to feel the storm! Suddenly there was thunder, and a flash of lightning hit a tree. The tree is on fire! Look at it burning! What power there is in electricity! One day, scientists will use all that energy to help people! When Victor was 17, his happy childhood ended. Father, what's wrong? You look so worried. Your mother is very ill. She wants to see you. He went to his mother's room. Victor, 
I know that I am dying. No, mother. Yes. I am sorry to leave you all. But I am happy that you and Elizabeth love each other. One day, you will marry her. After a few days, his mother died. Victor and the whole family were desperately unhappy. Why must we die? Why? I want to find out the secret of life. One day, some months later, Victor's father spoke to him. You are a young man now. It is time for you to choose a profession. I want to study science, father. Very well. You must go to university. And Henry? Is he going with me? No. I believe Henry's parents have other plans for him. Victor became a student at the University of Ingolstadt in Germany. The day came for him to leave home. Goodbye, father. I know that you will do well. Oh, Elizabeth, how can I leave you? Goodbye, Victor. Write to me. He was very sad on the long journey to Ingolstadt. Chapter 3 Ingolstadt University Ingolstadt was a university town and there were many students in the streets. Uh, excuse me, where is the university? Ah, just follow the students. Victor took his place for the first lesson. Who is the teacher? It's Professor Wardman. He teaches chemistry. He listened with fascination. Today is an important moment in your lives as you begin the study of science. Through science we can explore the secrets of nature. We can discover new unlimited powers. Victor was very excited. This is what I want to do. I want to become a great scientist and make discoveries to help people. He visited Professor Waldman in his home to ask for advice. You are very ambitious, Victor. I will help you as much as I can. Victor concentrated totally on his studies for two years. His teachers realized that he was a brilliant student. Who is that young man? His name is Victor Frankenstein. One day he will be a great scientist. Professor Waldman took a special interest in him. What are you working at, Victor? I'm trying to find out how life begins. Can we put back life into something which is dead? What do you think, Professor? Nobody has ever done that. I believe it is possible. Victor remembered the thunderstorm in the mountains and the burning tree. If we can control the power of electricity, anything is possible. The university allowed Victor to use a small laboratory. You can do your experiments here. Excellent! And there is a room next door where I can sleep. He built a high mast on the roof. What is that for? I want to catch the lightning and use electricity in my experiments. Victor was so involved with his work that he forgot about his family. You haven't opened these letters, Victor. They're from Geneva. Hmm? Oh, oh yes, I'll look at them later. You are working too hard. Why don't you take a holiday and visit your family? Not now. I haven't got time now. In Geneva, his father and Elizabeth were worried. He hasn't been home for two years. And now he doesn't even answer our letters. It's because of his work. It's the most important thing in his life. I don't understand it. Perhaps Henry can visit him and find out if he is all right. Chapter 4 The Secret of Life Victor became more and more obsessed with his work. He was thin and pale. I am worried about you. You are not eating properly. You will become ill. 
I must finish what I am doing. He studied anatomy and examined the bodies of dead people. How can I understand life if I do not study death? In secret, he began to collect parts of bodies for his experiments. He paid criminals to help him. Bring the pieces to me at midnight tonight, and remember, nobody must see you. All right, but I want half of the money now. Now I have everything I need. Finally, he was ready. He worked night and day without sleeping. First, I have to join the parts together. He must be strong. He will be bigger than a normal human being. After years of study, he was an expert in human anatomy. The creature is ready now, but can I really give him life? He moved the creature to a container filled with liquid. He looked out of the window. There are black clouds in the sky. Tonight there will be a storm. Victor connected wires from the mast to the container. Now I must wait. During the night, there was a storm. Lightning flashed across the sky. The moment of truth has come. Will the creature live? He felt the power of electricity in the room. The wires are burning hot. I cannot touch them. He ran to where the creature was lying. Something is happening in there. No. The container moved a little. He looked inside. My God. The experiment works. His eyes are open. Victor moved back. The container began to open slowly, and a head appeared. What a hideous face! I wanted to create life, but this is a monster. Victor ran out of the laboratory and locked the door. Chapter Five: The Creature. Victor hid in his room. What have I done? I have created a monster. This creature is so ugly and so terrifying. What can I do with him? He was exhausted, and he fell asleep. But his dreams were full of nightmares. No, no, Elizabeth, don't go near her. He woke up. The creature was there at the side of his bed. No! Keep away! Don't touch me! Terrified, he ran outside into the street. He was too frightened to return. He spent the rest of the night outside. Who can help me? Nobody will believe what I have done. In the morning, he found himself near the coach station. A coach was arriving. It's from Geneva. How I would like to be there now. There was a shout from the coach. Victor, Victor, Henry, what are you doing here? I've come to visit you, my old friend. You look so thin and pale. Is everything all right? Yes, of course. It's good to see you, Henry. Come with me. Victor was very agitated when they arrived at his room. Wait here, Henry. I'll call you in a moment. Nervously, he went up the stairs and opened the door. There's nobody here. Thank God. But where has the creature gone? Later that day, the two friends were eating. Victor, we are all very worried about you. You haven't written to your family for months. What has happened to you? You seem so different. Don't ask me, Henry. I cannot explain. Suddenly, there was a look of terror on Victor's face. The creature. He's there. I can see him. There's nothing there. Victor fainted and fell to the floor. Victor, what's the matter? Chapter Six. Murder. Victor was very ill. Henry stayed in Ingolstadt. 
to look after him. He has changed. Something has happened to him. Gradually, Victor got better. He tried not to think about the creature, but the memory always returned. Where is he now? What is he doing? Perhaps I will never see him again. He was very grateful to his friend. Henry, thank you for everything that you have done. You are a true friend. That's all right. I'm glad to help you. After some months, he was strong enough to travel. I feel better. I would like to go back to Geneva. Good. This letter has just arrived from your father. Victor opened the letter and read it. His face turned white, and he sat down. What's the matter? What does your father say? Victor gave him the letter to read. My dear Victor, I don't know how to tell you this terrible news. Your brother William is dead. The letter described what happened. William and a friend were playing in the woods. I'll hide in the trees. You try to find me. William disappeared into the woods. His friend could not find him. William! William! Where are you? After a while, he became afraid and ran to William's home. William is lost in the woods. I can't find him. The servants began to search for the boy. It's getting dark. We'll never find him. There was a shout. He's here! I found a body! It's William. Oh, my poor boy. He's dead. Look at the marks on his neck. Somebody has murdered him. What brute force there was in those hands. The letter finished with these words. Please come home, Victor. We need you here. We are all in a state of shock, especially Elizabeth. Henry turned to his friend. We must leave for Geneva immediately. They say it was murder, but who can have done such a terrible thing? William was only a child. Victor said nothing. But inside, he felt a strange, cold fear. Chapter 7 The Meeting Victor returned to his family home. Elizabeth was there. Oh, Victor, at last you are here. We have missed you so much. I know I was wrong to stay away. I love you all. I want to see the place where William was murdered. I'll come with you. No, let me go alone. It was dark and raining. He found the place in the woods. Poor William. You were just a child. You died because of me. I don't know how, but I know that I was responsible. He had a feeling that somebody was watching him. There was a flash of lightning. For a second, he saw a huge, dark figure among the trees. You! You monster! I knew that it was you! He ran after the figure. He's gone! He moved so fast! How did he find his way here? How did he know my home? Victor returned home, but now he was more worried than before. What is he planning to do next? How can I protect my family? The next day, he went for a walk alone in the mountains. He was desperate. He did not know what to do. I cannot tell anybody what I have done. Not even Elizabeth. Nobody will believe me. He saw something moving in the rocks. Who is that? Is there somebody there? Suddenly, the creature was standing in front of him. 
I am here. Frankenstein, your creature. He was much bigger than a normal man. His face was evil, but his eyes were sad. Victor was shocked, but he was angry too. What do you want from me, you monster? You killed William, my brother. I loved him so much. Do not speak to me of love. You showed no love for me. If your brother is dead, it is because of this. You are a murderer. You are evil. I created you, but now I must kill you before you hurt other people. No, Frankenstein. I do not want to hurt other people. I will never harm you. You are my father, my creator. But why did you create me if you do not love me? I am the saddest creature in the world. How can I love a monster? What do you want from me? I ask only for a little happiness. But you must help me. Come with me and listen to my story. Then you can decide. Chapter 8 The Creature Story The creature began to tell Victor his story. When I came to life in your laboratory, I was like a baby. I could not speak or understand. The creature went to his creator for help, but Victor ran away. He was cold, and he covered himself with Victor's clothes. Then he left the room and walked through the town out into the country. He did not know where to go. He was thirsty and hungry. He drank from a river and ate fruit from the trees. Snow began to fall, and his feet were cold. He went inside a house where there was an old woman. Who are you? God help me! What a hideous creature! She ran out in terror. He sat down by the fire. Then he came to a village. People were terrified when they saw him. What kind of creature is it? It's the devil himself! They threw stones at him. Go away from here! Out, you monster! He ran away into the woods. He hid in a hut next to a farmhouse. There was a small hole in the wall. He could see and hear the people in the house. They were good, kind people, but he was afraid to show himself. Sit here by the fire, father. Thank you. He lived there for months. At night, he worked to help the family. Look, Agatha. Somebody has cut all this firewood for us. It is the good spirit of the forest. At first, he did not understand language. But he listened carefully and learnt to speak. Here is some bread and milk, father. Felix, can you get some wood for the fire? Bread. Milk. Wood. He found a notebook in the pocket of the coat. He began to learn how to read. Victor Frankenstein. Geneva. The creature thought the young people were beautiful. He looked at his own reflection in the water. How ugly I am. I want to be a friend to these people, but how can I show them my face? Chapter 9 The Journey The creature continued his story as Victor listened. I wanted to make contact with the family. I felt so lonely. One day, 
The old man was alone in the house. He knocked on the door. Come in. Nervously, he went inside. Excuse me, I am a traveller, and I am very tired. The old man turned to him, but he was not afraid. Come and sit by the fire. You sound so sad. He looked into the old man's eyes, and realized that he was blind. I cannot see, but I can tell that you are unhappy. You are very kind to a stranger. I have no family and no friends. I need love and friendship. But when people see me, they hate me. How can this be? You have the voice of a good person. Just then. There were footsteps outside. Please help me. Tell them I am not bad. The door opened. Felix and Agatha came in. Ah! What is this monster doing in our house? Wait! Don't worry, Father. I'll protect you. Felix hit the creature with a stick. Out, you beast! How can you attack a blind old man? The creature did not defend himself. He ran out of the house. Where can I go now? The only person I know is Victor Frankenstein. He made me. He must help me. Geneva. I will go to Geneva and find him there. It was a long and difficult journey. One day, he was walking near a river. There was a young girl in the water. Help! Help! He ran to the side of the river. Hold my arm. Hold tight. He pulled the girl out of the water and put her on the grass. Are you all right? Just then, a man with a gun appeared. What are you doing with that girl? He looked at the creature. Ah, you horror! He fired the gun, then picked up the girl and ran away. The creature fell. There was blood from his leg. I saved their lives, and look how they thank me. There is no hope. They hate me, and now I hate them. Chapter Ten. The agreement. The creature traveled at night and hid during the day. Finally, he arrived in Geneva and found the Frankenstein home. In the woods, two boys were playing. I'll hide in the trees. You try to find me. These children are so young and so beautiful. Can they be full of hate? Like the adults, perhaps I can become their friend. One of the boys ran through the trees. The creature stopped him. Don't be afraid. Who are you? Help! I don't want to hurt you. Let me go, you monster! The creature put his hand over the boy's mouth. Stop! Stop! Don't say that. He held the child's neck. In a few seconds, he was dead. There was a name on the boy's jacket: William Frankenstein. So, he was my creator's brother. I am glad that he is dead. Oh, Frankenstein, you hurt me so much. Now. I can hurt you. After finishing his story, the creature turned to Victor. Now, I have told you everything. Victor was shocked, but he felt some pity for the creature. You did a terrible thing, but I can see that you are unhappy, and I am sorry for you. 
I need love. I need a companion. Only you can help me. You must do something for me. What do you want me to do? Only another creature like me could love me. You must make a woman to live with me and be my companion. What? I cannot do that. It was a terrible mistake to create you. How can I make another monster? You must. You have a debt to pay me, Frankenstein. You created me and abandoned me. If you refuse to help, I will torment you and your family until the day you die. No! I cannot bring a second monster into the world. There is already too much evil in you. I am evil only because I am unhappy. If you give me a companion, we will disappear to the frozen lands of the north where nobody lives. We will never hurt anyone. Victor thought in silence for a few moments. All right. I will do what you ask. But you must promise to stay far away from other people. I promise you that. Now, I must go and you must start your work. I will watch you. And when you are ready, I will return. Chapter 11 The Second Creature Victor was full of doubts and fears. Was I right to make that promise? My stomach turns at the idea of making another creature. His behavior was strange, and his eyes were wild. His father was very worried. Something is troubling you. What is it? I cannot speak about it, father. Elizabeth, too, was concerned. Do you love another woman, Victor? Tell me. I will understand. No, Elizabeth. I love only you. I want to marry you. But first there is something I must do. Please do not ask me any more. He found an isolated house and prepared to make the second creature. Once again, he had to collect the body parts. The work filled him with disgust, but he forced himself to continue. I am sick with horror. But it is the only way to protect my family. Sometimes he sensed that the creature was watching him. I know he is there. I can feel it inside me. Finally, the work was almost finished. But when Victor looked at the terrible body on the table, his fear grew stronger. Perhaps she will be a thousand times more evil than he is. How can I know? Perhaps... Together they will create a race of monsters. The world will never forgive me for letting this happen. He turned and saw the creature at the window. What eyes the monster has. What a look of hate. No! I cannot go on with this work. He picked up a knife and cut the body on the table into pieces. The creature screamed with anger and despair. Frankenstein, what have you done? You have broken your promise to me. Yes, I will never, never make another creature like you to bring terror into the world. You have destroyed my only hope of happiness. Now, I have nothing but hate and revenge. Go, monster. I have made my decision. I cannot help you. Yes, I am going. But remember this, Frankenstein. I will be with you on your wedding night. Chapter 12 Henry Clerval Victor was sure that his decision was right. I could not create a second monster. But the creature's words stayed in his mind. I will be with you on your wedding night. So, he wants to take his revenge on me. 
but I will kill him first. The next day, he put the pieces of the body into a sack. I can throw them into the middle of the lake. He went out in a boat. There. That is the end. There will never be another creature. When he returned to the shore, two policemen were waiting for him. Mr. Frankenstein, we'd like to ask you some questions. What's wrong? What has happened? We are investigating a murder. Victor thought about the pieces of body. He looked back at the lake. Did somebody see me with the sack? He turned to the policeman. Who is dead? A young man. We haven't identified him yet. Some people found the body at the side of the lake early this morning. There were marks around his neck. The murderer was incredibly strong. Victor felt his fear return. Did you see anything strange from your boat? No, nothing. Can I see the body? Come with us. He followed the policeman with terror in his heart. There was a body under a cover on the beach. The policeman pulled back the cover. Do you recognize the young man? Henry, what has he done to you? Oh, Henry, my dear friend. Victor was in despair. He fell to the ground next to his friend's body. The second death because of me. When will it end? He became unconscious, and the policeman brought him to a hospital. He was ill for a long time. He had a fever and wild, uncontrollable dreams. Get away from me, monster! I killed them. I, I created him, and they died because of me. Everybody thought he was mad. His father and Elizabeth came to take him home. Chapter 13 The Wedding Gradually, Victor got better. Elizabeth was still worried about his strange behavior. Are you sure that you love me? If you want to marry another woman, you must tell me. I want you to be happy. No, Elizabeth. I love you. Will you marry me? Please? Yes. You know that is what I have always wanted. This is wonderful news, after all our sadness. We will have the wedding next week. As the days passed, Victor became more agitated. I will be with you on your wedding night. It is me that he hates. He wants revenge on me. I will have to fight him to the death. He began to carry a pistol and a knife, and to look nervously around him. I feel him watching me. Everything is all right. We will be happy together after we are married. You will see. Be careful! What is the danger? I cannot tell you. At last, the wedding day came, and they were married. After the wedding, they took a boat to cross Lake Geneva. Look how beautiful the mountains are. It is a wonderful evening. You have made me so happy. But Victor was also very worried. He could not forget the creature's last words. Look, there is Evian. I can see our hotel. They arrived at the hotel. Elizabeth, go to our room and lock the door. I will come in a few minutes. Is everything all right? Yes, but go now. Victor searched the hotel and the garden. There is nobody here. If he wants to fight me, why doesn't he come? Suddenly, there was a scream. Ah! Elizabeth! Oh my God, he has come for her, not me! He ran to the room. 
Elizabeth was lying on the bed. My darling Elizabeth, what has he done to you? He saw the marks on her neck. No. No! Those monstrous hands have killed her! He looked across to the window. The creature was there, watching him and smiling. <laughs> Devil! You have taken all my hope. I will never forgive you. Victor ran to the window, but the creature was gone. Chapter 14 The Hunt When he heard about Elizabeth, Victor's father collapsed. Elizabeth too. What is happening to us? Two days later, he died. The monster has destroyed my family. Victor became mad with despair. For months, he spoke to nobody. Finally, he told his story to a magistrate in Geneva. You must catch this monster. He is a danger to the world. You created a monster? This is incredible. I have never heard such a story. You do not believe me. You have had a difficult experience, Mr. Frankenstein. You need to rest. Victor went to the graveyard where his family were buried. Now I have only one reason to live. I will find that creature and kill him. That is the only thing I desire. He heard laughter behind him. The creature was there. I am glad that you have decided to live. Now you can feel the pain that I feel. <laughs> he ran towards the voice, but the creature was gone. He is as fast as lightning, but I will catch him, even if it takes my whole life. Victor spent his life hunting the creature. He followed him into the mountains. The creature led him across burning deserts. My water is nearly finished. I cannot stop. The creature was always there in front, but it was impossible to reach him. Sometimes Victor thought he had lost him, but the creature always left a sign to show the way. He wants me to follow him. He wants me to suffer like him. His life was a torture. He was only happy when he slept. Let me sleep. In my dreams, I am with you, Elizabeth. And Father. And William. One night, he heard the creature's laughter. <laughs> Come with me, Frankenstein. I will take you to the frozen north, where the ice and the cold will cut you like a knife. In the Arctic snow, he could sometimes clearly see the creature. Using dogs and a sledge, he thought that he was getting nearer to him. Wait for me, you monster! I'm going to kill you! Nothing can stop me now! But one night there was a storm and the ice broke up. Victor was cut off at sea on a piece of ice. Chapter 15 The End Victor finished telling Captain Walton his story. You found me at sea and took me onto your ship. And so the creature is still out there? Yes. This is a remarkable story, Mr. Frankenstein. I do not have long to live. I am not afraid of dying. My life now is only a torture. And I know that I will be with Elizabeth again. But I want you to promise me one thing, Captain. What is it? That you will find the monster and kill him before he escapes again. I will do what I can. Later that day, Frankenstein died in his sleep. He looks calm now. Finally, he has found some peace. That evening, 
The captain was on the deck. What is that noise? I think it is coming from your cabin, Captain. He went down to the cabin. The creature was there, standing over Victor's body. I have killed you too, my creator. Forgive me, Frankenstein. Captain Walton was horrified, but he did not turn away. So, you are Frankenstein's monster? It is too late to be sorry. He is dead now, and his pain is over. I have a thousand times more pain. The captain remembered his promise to kill the monster. You must die too! You murdered and did evil things! I did not want to hurt anybody. I wanted love and friendship, but I found only hatred and hostility. Yes, I did evil things. I hate myself more than you hate me. But am I the only one who did wrong? This world made me evil. Walton felt great pity for the creature. What will you do now? My creator is dead. And now I have no wish to live in this world. I will go north, across the ice, as far away as possible. I will build a great fire, and I will lie down on it. The fire will burn the pain from my heart, and when the fire is finished, I too will be dead. Suddenly, the creature ran to the open window and climbed out. Captain Walton looked outside at the sea and the ice. He watched the creature disappear into the darkness. Thank you.